Fritz Dietl's miraculous sculptural forms created with handmade paper become an artistic equivalent to nature. His exhibition inaugurates the Schmidt Dean Gallery's new space at 1719 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. I grew up on a farm up in Connecticut and uh, spent my summers baling hay and putting fencing up and walking through the woods and summertime spent time up in the Adirondacks. Avid fly fisherman and just like being outside. And to me it's a real escape from the city and I, I feel the most comfortable actually outside in the woods. My work has always been about nature and organic forms, and I do a lot of work that's based on, on plants and flowers, underwater sea sponges, seeds, and acorns, and mushroom forms, and pollen, things that I find in nature. And a lot of observations get translated into the pieces. I don't consciously try to think about having something that looks like, like a flower bud, for example, even though some of the pieces have sort of that reference. My love of, of walking, whether it's on the beach or in the woods, is coming upon things like shells uh, when you're on the beach that are attached to other shells. And there's remnants of other things that become another shape. Uh, and I love that kind of combination of form, uh, sort of unexpected surprises. I've been doing artwork since the high school days. I went to a high school that had an art center called the Worcester Art Center in uh, Danbury, Connecticut. And that was started by the Ford Foundation, and it was tied to the high school I went to. Adults actually taking art classes, and so I was fortunate as a high schooler to be having art classes with adults, and people were serious about making art. I was really thinking I was going to go to ag school or forestry school, and with my involvement at this art center, I decided to make a career of art and uh, went to the University of the Arts. It's the first show that I've had since 2007. This work is really a compilation of pieces that have come about since I received the Pew Grant. In 2007, I received the, the grant and really used that uh, time and money to explore paper. I was fortunate enough to be introduced to Sue Gozen at the uh, Dudenay Paper Mill in New York, and she gave me a crash course in, in paper making. And since then, I've really spent time uh, concentrating and only working in paper, handmade paper, uh, abaca paper primarily, but some linen and some cotton. A lot of the work is paper laid over a superstructure that's removed. And the more recent pieces uh, that have wood in them, they actually, I've left the superstructure in there, not only to give strength, but also as a, another element in the piece. The process is um, <laughs> time consuming. Three layers of paper, and in between each layer is these lines, and these lines actually are rolled strips of abaca paper. And I put a sheet of abaca paper down, I paint on methyl cellulose, which is a cellulose-based glue, it's archival. I then put these strips, or rolled strips of abaca over the uh, sheets of paper and then I paint another layer of methyl cellulose over the top, and then that is actually wrapped around a form. That form is a plastic tube that's filled with packing peanuts, and inside there is a 12-foot long piece of aluminum tubing. The, the abaca paper dries, and then the, the aluminum tube is pulled out, and then the uh, peanuts are pulled out, 
There are 40 sheets of paper, approximately per, per form. They take upwards of like four to five days of paper making and building the form and taking it apart. That's another important part is these paper pieces become illuminated when light is coming through the backside, which really I think makes them sort of otherworldly. I love that sort of translucency and also reminiscent of glass and skin or almost like vegetable peelings. There's a uh, organic, uh, otherworldliness to them. I really let the paper speak for itself. Uh, when I build these forms, I'm not concerned about what happens when it dries, which is great stuff. I mean, to me, it's, there's the unexpectedness that happens, and I allow the, the paper to shrink and tear or constrict the forms, and I, I find that really appealing because it takes me out of the picture and allows the paper to be itself. And I think when you look at some of the pieces, whether it's the, the wall piece here, you'll see there's tears, and that to me is good. I mean, that allows the piece to sort of speak of its own. The stretching that happens uh, and the, the tearing or the buckling or the bulging, that's all good. Uh, and I don't want to try to spend my time controlling that natural event. So I'm a full-time sculptor and, and father of, of two girls. And my wife is a, an investigator for the National Labor Relations Board. And I like to say that I investigate forms and she investigates people. Who are you two guys? I'm Emma and I'm Anna. And are you the artist's daughters? Yes. And is he a pretty good sculptor? Yeah. You seem to have had an eye operation, am I correct? Yeah, yesterday. How's it feel? Does it hurt? Or? When I look into the sun it hurts, but it's mostly okay. You know the old story, what the doctor says? If you go in and you say, it hurts when I do this, you know what the doctor says? Don't do that. <laughs> Guess it's not that funny to the new generation. Does your dad spend all his live long day making sculptures? Most of it. Does he make you stir the, the pulp for his? Yeah. He does? Yes Sometimes. or no? Uh-huh. You know, there's a, a labor case that perhaps your mother could look into. If <laughs> You want to say anything for the future? Is it like how great your dad is or anything like that? <laughs> he's a great dad? Uh-huh. And? He's a good artist. And Emma and Anna, no one who sees your dad's remarkable show could disagree with that. <laughs>